So, hello and welcome to week six. Can't believe we're in week six already of Talking Asperger's with Andrew. And it's good to see you all back. Nice familiar faces. And um, today is going to be, might be quite a tricky one for me, actually, this one, rather than putting you on the spot, I might be putting myself on the spot. Because I would like to talk about relationships, which was something that Damien mentioned in week one or week two. And I've been giving it some thought. And I'm thinking relationships and the more I thought about it the more I realized I probably wasn't the best person to speak about this because it's probably going to be my wife who's probably best you can best tell me more about how I get on with relationships than others but um I'll, I'll kick off by saying that I I I can struggle with relationships and they they that isn't necessarily just the relationship with your wife partner but with with people general friends family um I've, I've had quite a few circumstances where friends and family have not been particularly kind to me uh, have let me down and in one or two instances i would say betrayal is is gets pretty close to what what some of them have done and that kind of makes you not want to open up and it makes you not want to have engaging conversation with them and so that becomes quite easy for me to back off to, to back out of the, of the situation because if I'm not comfortable with how things are with with someone I will I will back off because what's the point in putting yourself somewhere where you're not welcomed and you're not wanted so um, my kind of defense mechanism if, is if I'm in that sort of situation with someone that has has not been particularly kind to me I'll be very quiet and very uh, subdued. And, but on the other hand, the other way around is if I'm, if I'm really excited, I can get quite excited, quite vocal. And I will then talk quite, quite, quite fast, quite quickly. And having, um, having an engaging conversation with someone. So I, I think it would be worth speaking to just mention, asking Damien, what, 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 what prompted your question, Damien, about relationships? Um, I think that um, before I was diagnosed, I didn't realize there were certain aspects that, um, of relationships that I, I experienced. Uh, one was a almost a double side, uh, two distinct sides of a, a relationship with someone. One is to be uh, almost over the top. Uh, speaking too much and being very almost over enthusiastic. I remember a previous lady friend of mine. Um, I said, "You're perfect," and she said, "That's a little bit uh, intense." Uh, <laughs> and then, um, uh, and and on the other side, there'd be moments where I would, uh, I wouldn't want her to be near me. I'd want to go out for spend time on my own. I think that I'd. Uh, and then one point we were on holiday on the Isle of Paris uh, in a caravan and um, I remember thinking I'd, I'd like to escape for a while and um, I'd go for a walk or, or be detached and uh, uh, that would cause problems as well. So it, it, to get a happy medium was uh, not easy to, to work out that happy medium. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I can relate and, to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, go, no, go on, carry on. And to un misunderstand what um, is the, what they're sort of looking for in a you know in, in an, an approach and how you um, um, communicate with them and misunderstanding maybe things that they're needing or wanting by misunderstanding cues you know little things uh, which can easily blow up to become um, big things. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I find has has caused people to uh, burst into tears, and I didn't realize why they were. Upset, upset with me. I, I can relate to that. I, I, I am not good at reading social cues and cues from my my partner, my wife, and uh, I can get I can get things spectacularly wrong um, because I've already made my mind up. I formed my own opinion on sometimes quite limited or no information, and so I've got this mindset. I've got this viewpoint that I've created, manifested. And so Leslie will come into the room or I'll go into the room where we're talking. And, and I've already got my, my idea, my position. And Leslie comes up with something different or she'll say something and that contradicts or it, it doesn't gel with what I've got in my head as to how I think things are going to be. 
and then she'll come up and say she'll say amazing things and i think where did that come from i i, I don't get where where that's come from and and perhaps leslie can explain the other the, the sort of the, the the other side of the coin from that one perhaps i think it's got to do with expectations and boundaries you have boundaries and expectations of things that you don't share so and very few of us do whether you're neurotypical or neurodiverse there are certain times when you know we don't really share everything that we expect of each other we tend to, if we get to the point where we're going to say vows to each other, some of us say ditto because they forgot to do them. You're never going to let me forget that. <laughs> because they were too busy paying attention to the shortbread animals they were making for the banquet the next day. However, ditto was fine, although he's forgotten what I said. But anyway, there are expectations and there are boundaries in any relationship and when it comes to business, they're contractual. But even in, con in contractual relationships, which actually marriage is, it's one thing to have a job description. It's another thing to actually describe that in a way to two people and have them do understand it the same way. That, that's because we're all coming. We're all coming from a different point of view. That's actually fascinating. And I've never actually thought of it in that sense because when i worked as a geologist i i worked with contracts i would write contracts specifications conditions of contract the whole hit and and i would administer that contract for the work that was being done and i would know how things were going on and if things needed to change or the contractor wasn't doing it the way that they should do because i understood the contract and for leslie just to, to turn around and say that that the relationship is a contract is it's taken me a bit by surprise <laughs> because I can work. I can, I can, I can work a contract. Um, I can understand a contract. Cause it's got bits to it and it's got forms of words and it's got understandings and they're all written down in black and white. And, and I'm just coming into my head as I speak. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm somewhat scared to actually mention it. There's Sheldon's roommate agreement. <laughs> or <a> relationship <laughs> agreement that just come, come into my head and I thought no I don't want one of those but um that's... no but it is, it is interesting Andrew because you do and we've, we've spoken about this quite a lot you do tend to have this absolute view of what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do and how I'm going to react to something that you haven't even mentioned yet mm -hmm. yep. yeah yeah haven't vocalized it I don't even know what the context is, but you'll come in and you'll start to say something and it will be all fired up and ready to rock and roll because you're already defensive before we start. And I'm just sitting here having my tea, you know? And so basically what I have to do is realize that, I don't know what he's talking about. Now, has he done something? that he's afraid that I'm going to get mad at, oh, maybe I don't have to do anything at all. Maybe I can just let him punish himself, which I tend to do. Because I can't do it any better than he can. In fact, he can do it to himself much better than I can. So if I, you know, eventually I will probably find out what it was that he was worried about or not happy about or, you know, that he'd done. And sometimes it was a case of, it will be a case of, you didn't do anything. What are you getting yourself all worked up about? But you wouldn't like it if, and you didn't, and you, you would say, and uh, would I? How about you ask me first? How about we have the conversation first? Okay. So it gets very interesting living with Andrew. It's a bit like Sherlock Holmes in reverse. You have to you have to try and find where the clues are and what's going on, mm -hmm. what the plot line is. It's interesting you said that because you actually do the same thing to an extent, in that you will start a conversation with me that I think you're starting halfway through, because you already know the context of the subject, and so you've got a certain frame of reference in your head, and so you'll ask me, "So what about that then?" Okay, hang on. Just just a minute, just a cotton picking minute. 
<laughs> Hang on, I think we may have to bow out quickly here, guys. <laughs> what actually happens is you haven't been listening to me because I've actually spoken to you about it before. You've been on your phone scrolling and you've tuned me out. And you're partly deaf too. Yes, but th so this, this could be something completely excuses. This could be something completely I, new. And, but and this is it. This is your perception of what the conversation is. I am also possibly getting excited about something and I have said to you and I'm coming through and I'm making a link from something that you've said, but I've actually, and this is what happens, particularly with ADD, I've actually seen something in that conversation that I want to explore. This is where my perception is. This is where I'm standing at the time. And that's how I'm receiving your information. And the same is going for you. You're receiving my information from the point of, what the, where, how, what did she say? What did I miss? Stop, stop doing that. I'm going, oh, this is exciting. This is great. He said something. And I, I remember this conversation. And I remember this, but he doesn't remember the conversation. I can be very forgetful. And uh, that's not a cue for me saying I'm not interested in the conversation. That could be just because I am forgetful. And so I sometimes need reminding a little bit more than gently that we may have had a conversation before about something. And I but can do that. I, I, you do. <laughs> I was, I was wondering if anyone else has got experience of having uh, difficulties, not say difficulties, but challenges with someone else close to you and uh, about perception and expectation and boundaries. Chris, is there something you might want to share? Yeah, I think uh, uh, there's a bit of resonance in there for me. And one of the things I find most frustrating is, is a feeling that I'm being consulted just for the sake of being consulted, but the answer has already been decided. And it's like a, a game where I've got to try and pick the right answer. And I find that very difficult to do. Yeah, I can, I can understand that. I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Laura? You're not going to get away with it, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. So, no, I was actually thinking about my husband and I, and, um, well, what he complains about at times is that I don't think about him enough. Like, for example, I may cook for myself and for my child, but I may not cook for him. Or maybe he's in bed, but he's not, like, his sleeping and I don't I don't cover him I don't use a blanket to actually you know uh, <laughs> cover him and make him feel uh, comfortable while he's sleeping while he do that he does that every time with me or maybe or maybe I just work too much and he doesn't like it he says you don't spend enough time with us or you're never there for us or maybe I speak to you and you're not listening to me you pretend you're listening, but you're not actually listening to me. And, uh, or, or maybe he starts telling me a story and I interrupt him by asking him a question about something different, something I'm interested in, but he's still telling his story and he gets really, really angry at me because uh, it seems to him that I don't care about his story, <laughs> about what he's saying. So actually there are quite a few examples I could make. I don't know if this ever happens to you. I mean, is, that the, is that the case though, Laura? Is it, that, is it that you're not interested in the story he's telling? Is it something that you've heard before? I just have something stuck in my mind. I really need to say that. That's yeah, it. Yeah. It's not that I don't want to listen to the story. I, I, I really have to say that thing because I may forget after, after that. That happens all the time. I interrupt people because I need to say something. And if I don't say it right there, right now, I, I may forget it. I may forget it later. 
So it's not that I'm not interested in the story. I just want to say that thing and then listen, keep listening to the story. But then he says, no, because you're not listening to me. So I won't go ahead with my talking. And, and I'm sorry because... Um, it's interesting because there's an emotional reaction there to something that he can actually understand is going on with you because he knows that you have Asperger's, yeah? Well, yeah, are, I, or, yeah, yeah, we have discussed about this. As I said, I don't have an official diagnosis yet. Uh, okay. Was, yeah, but he, 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 we, we discussed about this and he notices that I've got the traits, all the traits. And so he thinks something is different about me. Right, okay. Yeah. So what I was saying earlier on about expectations, etc. it's something that everybody does. We go into situations and we get emotionally attached to each other and we want to be together, just not all the time. And that's mm -hmm. absolutely natural. However, it depends on how you put it, Damien. If you say someone's perfect and if they're perfect, then why wouldn't you want to be with them all the time? Because that's the perfect situation. So it's, it's an idea of what your expectations and your boundaries are but we all come with a bag full of them, but very, very rarely, unless it is a contractual business thing, and even then there are codicils and little variances everywhere. We don't put our bags on the table. We don't open them up and we say, look, this is my expectation of you. What is your expectation of me? What is your expectation of how I will be in this relationship? Because it's quite cold. Yeah, and yeah. let's face it, people uh, want to have the, oh, it's so lovely and it's so, it's so gorgeous. And, no. you know, no, life is not lovely and it's not always gorgeous. And we have to learn to live together. So we have to know how to negotiate the ground we're walking on. And that's where we don't, that's where a lot of us fall down. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> It's it 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 is a two way street. It is definitely a two way street, and it's and it doesn't it it can't work if it all comes from this one direction. It has to has to go both ways, and I I just find I find finding the words very difficult to find sometimes because I don't want to upset Leslie or the other person, whoever that person is, um, but I want to get across what I want to say. And so I have to try and strike this balance, which has got a lifelong experience behind it of when you say these things or when you do these things, then you're going to get chastised by your parents or your older brothers or your aunt or your uncle or your grandparents. So I've, I've got that baggage with me. And, 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 and as I was actually saying to someone yesterday, we were at a, an event yesterday, that, <laughs> conditioning that baggage that you bring with you, you you can change that behavior but it's not easy to do that and I, I I do find it difficult to have those conversations at a certain time I have to be ready to have those conversations I can't just drop into an important conversation when someone else might be ready to have the conversation but I'm not uh, I have to get my head in the right space to be able to have that conversation in the right way with that other person and clearly those two things aren't necessarily going to align all the time no there's a greek tragedy element that goes on there it's a case of you know like the, the greek oracle has no grammar there's no punctuation in it so depending on how you read it it will mean something different to everyone who reads it mm. so when you don't want to upset me in particular it's very upsetting to me, that upsets me that you don't want to talk to me because you think I'm going to get upset. So you actually, in the Greek tragedy way, make it happen. Okay. Yeah, I, I relate. I can understand that. That's... Where, where people have said, it, we, I, like, I want to talk about things uh, and it's not always, I'm not always ready. Um, happy to or able to talk about things. Um, maybe in the past, maybe now, maybe with greater understanding, I, I can talk about things more, explain why I feel certain ways or 
um, why I sometimes need space or to to disappear for a little bit. Um, um, so it's probably the one my worst characteristic in a relationship is is wanting too much of my own space or, or disappearing in the moments or finishing conversation when the other person's still talking <laughs> and uh, that sort of thing. So. Uh, yeah, I, I can I, I can relate to that because I can get to a point, and I think I said this before, where in in whatever situation it might be a, a family meeting or a group of friends or something, and I might I might be having a nice time, you know, I would like to think I'm enjoying myself, but I will get to a point where I have to think about leaving. I have to leave, not because I'm being treated badly or I'm not enjoying myself, but I know that if I stay too much longer, I will start to become irritable or uh, want to get away or start to be yeah. ratty or be short with people. And rather than have that experience for myself and to put other people in the firing line of me being rude, I would just try and say, okay, it's been really nice being here, but I need to go now. And, and I will give Leslie the cue and uh, we'll, we'll quietly disappear off and come home. So, I, I can completely get that. And, and I know that that sometimes annoys Leslie because she's enjoying herself as well. And why should it always be dictated to by, by my comfort? Um, but we kind of realize that it, it, it's helpful if I do get away and find my own space um, so that I can recharge, calm down, clear my head, which is not an easy thing to do. It's always on the go a million miles an hour all the time. The interesting thing is, though, that he also worries when I'm not in sight. There are times that he will get into a state, get himself into, as we say, a right stushy about being my, where I am or what I'm doing. And, you know, if we go out, there was a time when I went to a coffee shop to see a friend. <laughs> now, for me, for me, yeah, I'm going to tell him. No, it's OK. I, me, was, I was expecting this. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's a case of I'm going to see my friend. I like to have a good gab. So you're not going to see me for a while and you're going to be writing anyway or doing what you do. And so, you know, it doesn't really matter. However, Andrew in his mind, his own mind, has an expectation of how long I'm going to be and what time I'm going to be back at. So when this doesn't happen and he telephones me or he texts me, however, my telephone is on silent and it's not in my hand because I'm having a conversation with someone and I am of the generation where that happens. So about, was it an hour oh, and a half? Two. Okay, two hours, which is not a long time for someone to be away out for a cup of coffee with someone, let's face it. I have Andrew stomping up and down outside like a wet Yeti on speed. And he's grilling and he just wanders into the coffee shop and says, don't you ever answer your phone? And he's worked himself up. I mean, there are people around and I'm like, looking at him going, okay, here we go. Just let him get it out. And my friend beside me is totally, what is going on? Is this man mad? What is going on? I was almost calling the hospitals and the police because I didn't know where you were. I said, well, you obviously did know where I was because you're standing in front of me now. It wasn't completely. It wasn't absolutely completely like that, but that was very close. What that what, was my feeling. That was yes. My, no, that was I, absolutely. I, I, from your perspective, I absolutely get and understand that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying you're. I'm not saying you're lying here, Leslie. I'm still but, trying but, to explain it to my friends. <laughs> but what? I was absolutely fine with Leslie being as long as she wanted. I could amuse myself doing my writing. But something had happened that required me to speak to Leslie about it. I do not know what that thing was now. It has gone from my head. But something had happened and I needed to speak to Leslie. It was about an appointment or something like that. And I needed to speak to Leslie to confirm it to this other person about something or other. And so having not had a response to the text messages, not having had a response to the phone calls, they were ignored. I, as Leslie said, I got myself in our right state. And, and I, 
barged into that coffee shop and I bellowed at her. I absolutely bellowed at her. Having said what I said, and she said, I can't remember what you said. I, I was still in my own zone. I went back. I, I, I said, go home. I will be there shortly. <laughs> and we and, will talk. And, and that, that was it. I absolutely had to speak to Leslie about this appointment and this thing. And, you know, no one and nothing was going to stop me having this conversation with Leslie. And I know she was with her friend and she hadn't seen her friend for a long time. But I had given myself permission to interrupt that because it was important without thinking that Leslie just might be thinking, oh, Andrew, just leave me be, I'm fine. I didn't even know the phone was going. It was in my bag next to me. And the thing, it would be off. It had been turned off. So that, that, that wasn't one of my proudest moments. <laughs> I, I did the same as you, Andrew. That happened to me as well. I did the same with my husband on a river cruise. I lost him on the boat. <laughs> and when I found him, I did the same. I was like, where the hell did you go? Where are you? Well, you, you do have an excuse, Laura, because there was an indication where he could have fallen over the, the side of the boat. You know, but, you know, the only thing I was going to fall over was the pavement. So, you know. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's tough being in relationships with whether they're your partner or family or friends, because um, I don't know how they're going to react to me at that moment in time in those circumstances there and then. And it might change. And they the, and and change is something that I struggle with greatly and having having in my head people think people thinking that people might change what they're doing which might then make me not comfortable or cause me discomfort or cause me to do something that I don't want to do or not comfortable about doing that that situation that puts me on alert and and I've always been someone who's had a high alert level. I'm I'm probably on DEFCON 4 when most other people are on DEFCON 1. And um, I, I I hope I've got that the right way around, but you know what I mean. And and I and I and I struggle with being around people like that because I don't know what they're going to do. And and them doing something that I don't know what it is can cause me discomfort. And all the things that can trigger me to have a, a meltdown, a blow up uh, or, or something like that. So I'm always, always on the alert for what's going on around me, what's going on over there, what's going on over there, even to people that aren't connected with what I'm doing, because something might happen. I have a, a secondary fear because I've had two back injuries in my when I was a young man. And whilst I am quite mobile these days, I have an irrational fear that if someone knocks me and causes me to fall over, I'm going to damage my back again and I'll get paralyzed and I'll be stuck in a wheelchair. This is where my head goes. I don't have these scenarios where things turn out lovely and happy. I have the scenarios where they turn out to be nuclear holocaust and, and world ending situations in my head. So going shopping, I have to be wary of children running around the shops or people going too fast with their trolleys around corners, because if they hit me, I might stumble, I might fall over, I might damage my back. So I have this, this little protective bubble of me. And, and that is something that I protect, uh, overprotect sometimes. And that falls out. There's a fallout of that into how is it that you can't understand that this is going on with me? But the thing to remember always is that the other person, you may be married to them, you may be living with them, you may just be dating them. They have their own ideas of how things are going to pan out. And unless you actually talk about it and say, look, and Andrew and I have had these conversations. It's my own fault. I picked them. He came to one of my workshops and I kept him. So, you know, I like a challenge. 
And basically, it's a case of I had no basis for comparison. Andrew has. Andrew was married before. I held out until I was 50. Wasn't going there. So, you know, I have my own difficulties because I got kind of stuck in my ways myself. Living on my own a lot. However, I trained myself not to catastrophize too much, not to go too far. Because if two of us are doing that, oh my goodness, what kind of a mess are we going to be in? So being more in the moment, although I will say to Andrew things like, we could do this, we could do that. And I can see him always starting to go, mm, then this is going to happen and that's going to happen and everything. However, he was very brave at one point and he was very good at the one time when I needed him not to go too far into the future. And I know that part of him was already there when I was diagnosed with cancer. And I said to him, do not go into the future. Stay right with me, right here, right now. We take this day by day. We do not do anything about telling anyone who is immediately going to put me in a wooden box. We are going to only tell those people who we have to, and even then it will be filtered. And he was very good about that. And I know that he was, he was having a lot of trouble with it, but for me, he did. He managed to hold himself together. But that was basically because I stood there and said to him, this is what we're going to do. And I was with you on that. Absolutely with you. Yeah, on that. yeah. And he understood the premise right away. He understood it. But the best reason for it was because we communicate reasonably well. When it comes to things, you know, things are, you know, building up and building up. I will eventually say, we have to talk. And he goes, oh, God, what have I done? Oh, no, what's she going to say? What's she going to do? But basically, it's a case of we have to agree to disagree or we have to agree to go on forward. And I think, Damien, that might have been what you were asking about dating people, etc. When I first met Andrew, it was because he came into a circle, shamanic uh, practice circle that I was running. And so we were meeting in a, a space that was away from usual life so it's a case of we started out outside the box we were already in that space so what you have to do is you have to decide wh which box you're going to work in and when you're working within those those boundaries those expectations that we have then basically you have to have the other person on board they have to understand what's going to happen and they have to also understand that there are going to be times when you're going to be absolutely human and you're going to have a good old shouting match. But that doesn't mean that they hate you. It doesn't mean that you're going to get divorced or you're never going to see them again. What it means is that we have emotions. We have thoughts. And when an emotion and a thought comes together, strange things can happen. So what we have to do on occasions is look at that and say, how did you choose to think that way? What were you feeling when you thought when you were thinking that? And that's the key. I was afraid that this would happen. I am afraid that this will happen. And sometimes it works and sometimes you have to just leave it alone and let it settle. But as long as you keep the lines of communication open, I think that that's what, how it works. And for us, Andrew usually lives upstairs and I usually live downstairs. We come together at meal times. And the only time that we're together on a almost permanent basis is when we're on holiday together. We spent a month in Tibet and Nepal. It was great. Oh, fabulous. We saw each other every day. But then we were happy to have a rest when we came back. I think I think no, Liz has hit it on the head there. It's it's about being open, and if you're not feeling up to something, say so. And I'm as guilty as anyone of holding that in. So, um, yeah, relationships are tricky things. I think, I think you have to understand yourself as well as the other person. I think knowing who you are and what what triggers you, what what triggers you with certain things, and what what can lead you in certain 
paths and certain thought processes and then try and marry that to the person that you're speaking to and your person you're with and and having having a way to make something work when 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 things happen so um we're nearly out of time i can't believe that's that's us on time but does anyone have anything very short very brief they wanted to add before we wrap up for the day we've got about 90 seconds the thing i've seen across those two stories really is uh, something that happens to me where there's a piece of detail missing and I have to have it now. I can't move on without it. And I understand the sort of future look and the catastrophizing is, it, is a weakness, but it's that piece of detail. And I think, you know, Laura mentioned the same thing about interrupting people's conversations because there's something that you've seen as really important that they possibly don't. Possibly that's the reason you stormed into the coffee shop as well. And, and I find that's, that's very difficult to overcome training yourself to not catastrophize around and, and to ask more questions is one thing, but when there's a piece of detail not being given to you that you think is really important to take that next step, that's very, very difficult to deal with. Yeah, thank you. I think that's our time up for today. Thank you very much for joining very me, good. talking about relationships. So where's my... Yeah.